is to say the Globetrotters won with another basket full of scores. Back in 1907, it cost a quarter of a million, the first motor racing circuit ever built. But since it was requisitioned in 1939, what remains of the track has decayed into a weed-covered ruin of its former glory. But to judge from the crowds and the old cars at this 60th anniversary, Brooklyn's lives on in memory, if not in the racing calendar. Ten years ago, a memorial was unveiled in tribute to the sportsmen and women who made the history of the first three decades of motor racing. We can bring back the past through film from Movie Tone's archives, when Brooklyn's was vibrant with rasping exhausts and thrilling spectacles. Bugatti in the 500 mile race in 1933. The faster cars used to race high up on the banking within feet of the edge. In 1932, Clive Dunphy, driving the big Bentley number 41, took it too close with fatal results. can't be reborn, but machinery can. Today, many of the great cars of the Brooklyn's days are still lovingly preserved. A link with other great names. Harry Thomas, Malcolm Campbell, Henry Seagrave, John Cobb. During the 30s, John Cobb used to race this giant Napier Railton at speeds higher than the winner of today's Indianapolis. Now owned by Sir Patrick Lindsay, in his heyday, it collected over 40 world records. At the wheel of this same car in 1934, John Cobb himself. This car holds for all time the Brooklyn's lap record of over 143 miles an hour. 